The Milwaukee Bucks are back in the win column. It didn't take long to bounce back from Saturday's loss. Yesterday, the Milwaukee Bucks defeated the Wizards in Washington 117 to 111. This was actually a nice team win all around. Giannis put together 23 points, 13 assists, and 10 rebounds. Yes, a trip dub, and I know everyone is talking about that last second brick of a shot so he could get a rebound and get the triple double. I thought it was kind of funny, but I know some people were hating on it. Patty C put up eight. Brooke Lopez put up 15 and six. Drew Holiday chipped in 19 points. Grayson Allen put up 11. Joe Ingles put up 14. Javon Carter put up 20. I think he had like five or six three-pointers in this game, man. He definitely has spurts and they just signed Goran Dragic. So he is going to try to be, you know, the backup point guard. And Javon's like, no, 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 I'm the backup point guard. And maybe that's what we need because Goran Dragic is like 37. He might be able to come in in spurts. And if there's an injury, but definitely not a guy you want to uh, play a lot of minutes at this point in his career. I noticed that we are still not playing Chris Middleton on back-to-backs, meaning he didn't play yesterday, but he has been a little spark plug off of the bench. When you have players like Bobby Portis, Chris Middleton, and Jay Crowder coming off the bench, that is really hard to match that production from other bench guys around the league, man. So shout out the Bucks on the wizard side. Porzingis put up 24 points and Bradley Beal put up 33 points. The one thing that I am kind of worrying about is it seems like we are giving up a crap ton of points to the guard position. It seems like it doesn't matter what team it is. I mean, we've seen Terry Rozier go off for like 38 points against us. I don't know what's going on and how we fix that, but it seems like shooting guards and point guards are eating. And I don't know if it's like take advantage of Grayson Allen or take advantage whoever isn't Drew Holiday but something needs to change because in the playoffs, if you're giving up 30 to 40 points to a guard, man, that's tough, bro. So yes, we do need to get that taken care of. I absolutely love where the Bucks are sitting right now. We, were, we are still the one seed in the East and the Celtics are right on our tail. We got to continue to win, continue to get healthy and stay healthy. I believe the Celtics are a game and a half behind us. That means, you know, at any point we have a bad little streak, they could be the one seed. And in a matchup like this, I definitely want us to get that one seed. So if we play them again and it goes to game seven like last year, we want game seven in Milwaukee. That stuff does matter. It matters all the time when we play the Celtics. Whoever has home field advantage. I remember we played the Celtics like five, six years ago in the playoffs. I think it was the year that like the Celtics had Isaiah Thomas when they were really good. They were like a top seed that year, something like that. It was Brad Stevens, one of his first few years, and they looked really good. And the Bucs took them to seven games. And I remember we got to game seven and it was in the garden and we lost. We lost lost last year in the garden we definitely want to maintain this one seed without hurting ourselves too much and one thing that i've learned about the bucks is we're still getting healthy and our style takes a toll on our players but it also takes a toll on everybody else man and it seems like every other game when teams are playing the bucks somebody has to come out the game real quick someone has to get checked and i'm not saying we're injuring people i'm definitely not saying that at all a lot of the fouls and a lot of the things just happen but Giannis just runs at the rim so hard like this dude is so big but he carries so much force I feel like we're definitely take our toll on teams and that's one thing that we need to keep our foot on the pedal 
keep on winning hold down this one seed because the Celtics and the 76ers are for real. I have a lot of respect for the Cavaliers. The Knicks are on a crazy run right now. I don't know if they are legit to get past the second round though. I think that they could win in the first round and get to that second round, but could they get to the third? That is tough, man. The Nets are falling. The Heat are falling to the seventh seed. The Hawks are the eighth seed. It's really weird, man. Weird East year, except for like the top three seeds. Everyone could admit the Bucks, Celtics, and Sixers, no matter how you put them. Most people had those three teams in their top three. The Cavaliers were the team that got Donovan Mitchell. So, you know, you thought they could be a four or five seed and that's what they are. And then the rest is really weird. You know, the Knicks are wonky, but they're at five and they're on a nine game win streak. The Nets, they're not horrible. They have a bunch of good players, but they don't have any superstars. So how far can they go in the playoffs? They could be a first round exit. The Heat, man, they have so much talent, but they don't look like the regular Heat. I saw these guys in Milwaukee like two weeks ago, and Jimmy Butler balled out, Bam Adebayo balled out, but everybody else looked off. I don't know what's going on with that team. They need a makeover. I don't know what it is, but something is completely off. They don't look like the same team. And the clock is ticking for a team like that. Then you have the Hawks at the eighth seed. They're definitely one of the most depressing teams this year. I thought they'd be a lot higher. And the most depressing team this year when it comes to projections and predictions is definitely the Bulls. I had them at like a seven or eight seed this year, but definitely thought they were gonna make the playoffs. So they were like a promising seventh and eighth seed to me that could be all the way up to a four in my mind. And wow, the Bulls have so much talent and at the trade deadline, they didn't do anything with it. So yes, the East is in a weird situation. It's very top heavy. And then from like six to 10, is a bunch of good players, but not good teams, if that makes any sense. Like the Nets have a bunch of guys. He have like two really good players and a bunch of guys. Hawks, two good players and a bunch of guys, it seems like. Raptors, just a bunch of guys. Wizards, two good players and a bunch of guys. Like very weird year for the East, but the West is not much better when you go flip it. And I think that same thing with the East, there's really three teams in the West that I see that could make it to the finals. And something tells me that the Grizzlies aren't gonna be in that picture no more. I fell off with the Grizzlies a few months ago and maybe they could still get to the Western Conference Finals, but I honestly think that the Nuggets bring more to the table, the Suns, with KD, if they're healthy, they bring a lot more to the table. And if Steph Curry can get healthy, you never want to doubt the Warriors in the playoffs. And they're currently at the five seed, man. They're making the playoffs and they have an opportunity to move up because the Kings are at the three seed and they're a really nice team. But how far can the young Kings go, my friends? They haven't been to the playoffs in so many years. And we know the longer you get into it, the more experience comes into play. And now don't get me wrong. I remember like two, three years ago when the Bucks went to their championship, we beat the Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals, and they weren't experienced. They just got there, but, yo, they, they kind of got beat real quick. Same thing with the Mavericks last year in the Western Conference Finals. They got beat real quick by the Warriors, and they really shouldn't have been there, but the Suns choked, and the Mavericks deserved to go to the next round. They won fair and square, but the Suns were a way better matchup for the Warriors than the Mavericks but the Suns choked, they didn't do enough. That's why you gotta play all seven games, man. And I am a huge fan of the NBA. I thought I would just take a second to talk about the rest of the teams that I kind of like 
And I didn't talk too much about the West because, you know, we're Bucks fans and we worry about the East. We got to worry a little bit about the West. Worry about your three best teams and who we'll match up with. And I think there's a good chance if the Bucks did make it to the finals, knock on wood right now, I think there is a highly good chance, about an 80 to 90 percent chance that we could either play the Nuggets, the Suns or the Warriors. Who is the other team that you would throw in there? Now, the Mavericks have talent. Now, they have Kyrie and Luka, but I don't think they're going to the finals. I don't think they're complete. I don't think the Clippers are complete. I don't think the Timberwolves are complete, or the Kings, or the Grizzlies at this point. And the Grizzlies are a whole other video in itself. Yeah, the only ones that really I think could get to the finals are the Nuggets, Suns, and Warriors. And something tells me that the Nuggets aren't for real again, but hey, who knows, man? This could be the year that they break free just like the Bucks did a couple years ago, man. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about the Bucks. Let's talk about the East, the West. This is kind of a fun episode. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, the Milwaukee Bucks play the Magic in Orlando. We will give you all the coverage that night or the next day with an update and a review of the game. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Big bad wolf, watch the moon glow. I got a Greek freak, she called me. I'm just a kumpo, just follow the kumpo, and I know that you.